Take it one day at a time.
Good morning, Hockey World. Welcome to the New Zealand Heritage Hockey Tournament 2024, the place where culture and pride hit the turf and some of the best players in the country have the chance to stand up and represent their heritage. We're coming to you live from the National Hockey Centre here in North Harbour, home of the North Harbour Hockey Association and, of course, home of the New Zealand Black Sticks. It's the third day of tournament and it's always one that throws up surprises here at Heritage Hockey with must-win games, upsets, penalty shootouts and everything in between on the agenda today. I'm Brad Pittman and we'll be with you this entire Easter weekend, bringing you all 16 games of the Heritage Hockey Tournament 2024. I'm joined in commentary uh, by New Zealand Indian star, New Zealand Māori star, New Zealand indoor, New Zealand fives. Uh, the list goes on. Audio Hippy, welcome up this morning. Kia ora, Brad. Thank you for having me. And what an awesome opportunity this tournament is to just celebrate cultural diversity throughout Aotearoa. I mean, and even coming together and being able to identify those specific skills and skill sets that each culture brings to New Zealand as a whole is an amazing thing to celebrate and watch. Yeah, and who better to have talking about that than yourself, who's been over in the last sort of 18 months to a couple of World Cups, seen styles and, and play styles from a whole bunch of different countries not only those represented here at this Heritage Tournament, but talk to us a little bit about your uh, experiences in the fives and the indoor in terms of seeing some of these cultures come out here today. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, a good point to note is uh, the Indian style of hockey. Eh? So previously we played me and Holly Hilton-Jones, who's on the field today, played the Indian national Indian team and their style is extremely flary and they're allowed to just express who they are on the field and it really comes through as well as their good team team culture and ability to play and then as, as opposed to that is the indoor which is it is very skilly but very very much more composed and um and controlled in what you do um so we see some of the Māori girls out here too Ahu Mairangi who's in the uh, national indoor squad training with us who, who hopefully will get away to a um, Olympic, um, Olympic, a uh, World Cup qualifier mm. later on in June this year which is going to be held in Australia so fingers crossed that some of those girls get to get out there and experience that today. Yeah that's it and it's um, you know there's ladies from all over the teams who are involved in these uh, new national programs the fives the indoor that sort of thing which is going on uh, exciting opportunities for all involved as we see the two teams out here this morning. Uh, first match for the day, it is the Junior Māori women taking on the New Zealand Asian side. The New Zealand Asians new to the tournament this year, um, but sort of propped up and led by Julia King, of course, who's um, you know one of the best players going around the country in, in the last 10 years or so. Um, they're out here in their debut tournament and Uriwa, they haven't had any wins yet but they're a tough team to play against because they do play with such a different style. Uh, oh, absolutely, and I think uh, you mentioned Julia King out there who, who's actually really doing a good job to nurture her team and let them come through and play the kind of hockey that they are used to playing. She does really well not to over-dominate the middle of the field but just distribute really well. Um, supported by some of the other senior players in there, but I'm really excited to see this Asian team come back. What an amazing, different culture to have in this in this co papa. Um, good luck to them today, and it is going to be difficult for them because these Maori ladies have been undefeated so far. Yeah, that, that's right. And in the grand scheme of things, the result is a little bit of a formality um, today. 
Let's see two wins for the Māori side and two losses currently for the Asian team. But uh, another opportunity for this Asian team to keep um, their improvement, keep continuing, keep developing in this space. Uh, meanwhile, chance for the Māori team perhaps to build some combinations, grow a little bit more together in uh, preparation for tomorrow's final. Uh, we'll see you in action a little bit later in the day, contesting the second spot in that final, uh, which we're looking forward to. Of course, that's the two o'clock game. Your Indian ladies taking on the Heritage Barbarians. Uh, one of you will take on this New Zealand Junior Māori side, and uh, look, there's skill right across the park as we see uh, some of the team list there. You mentioned Holly Hilton Jones, who came across with you to the fives. Um, she's a bit of a leader now in this side, playing at the back uh, alongside her sister, Gracie. Um, Ahu Mairangi, you mentioned part of the indoor setup now, um, but there's some, some real excitement up the front. I liked Penelope Taulofu yesterday. She scored a couple of really good goals. She's quite exciting, isn't yep. she? She's very slick on the ball. Yeah, yeah, and for, um, you know, pretty dominant in the middle of the field for the side, captaining them as well. Um, I've also quite liked the emergence of Shinara Marshall. Um, she's a bit of a, a midfield uh, attacker out there. She's got really nice skill uh, on the ball. She drags back and forth with the ball on the end of her stick. The one thing that will be uh, a little bit of note at the moment, pretty tough to see the colour differences between the two teams uh, as we start this morning. That is Shinara Marshall showing those skills off the bat. But in the black singlets going right to left on your screen is the junior Māori side. And the black tops with the red and yellow going the opposite direction is, of course, the Asian team. And uh, I, I think one of the good things to note about this Asian team is they actually work quite hard together on the field today. I think I know that was a challenge for us, is that they, they all came forward together and they came forward pretty fast. Yeah, it's the one thing we've noticed in both the men's and women's Asian sides. They've got some players with some real speed. Um, they're not the biggest players, but man, they get around the park well and they put some real pressure on defensive groups. They take off with pace, and uh, you know if they can just get some things happening up the front, some connections working, they can be pretty deadly. And here is the junior Māori side, just ball at the back with Grace Hilton-Jones. Nice turnover by Lisa Zhao. Yeah, a couple of back and oh, forth. Back, yeah. <laughs> Holly Hilton just supporting her teammate there and cleaning up for her. There's Karamia Leathers there. This wins a little free hit in the middle of the field and Penny will step back onto it. I mentioned she scored two goals yesterday, one from the penalty corner, one in field play. So um, skilled across both goal scoring facets. And here's the Asian side up the middle of the field. Still there, there's players forward now for the Asian team. They do have some exciting pieces of play and, and injecting themselves into the middle with their, with their senior players. I mean, obviously Jess is, is captaining them out there today, but if the Māori team can do well to keep both Jess and um, Julia at bay, then I think they'll they'll do pretty well. Yeah, that's it. A lot of their build-up does stem from from Jess Ellis and, and Julia King just starting things, as well as Lana Charlick at the back there on the ball. Um, all pretty good distributors, but if you can keep them at bay, you can keep them looked after, and it's going to be a bit of a job out there for the midfielders of the Māori side. Yeah, you'd uh, like to expect they'll have a bit of success here. And the other, uh, I guess, senior player, if you call her that, in this Asian side, Shuku Morimoto, the goalkeeper. Oh, um, yes, indeed. She's indeed. Uh, awesome. Absolutely awesome. Had a really good game yesterday uh, in uh, the game against your team. And I will uh, ask oh. the question, Oriwa, how have you enjoyed uh, representing the New Zealand Indian ladies this year? First time at the Heritage Tournament for you. Yes. Um, crossing over from previously, of course, representing New Zealand Māori. How have you found uh, the weekend, the experience, the new teammates and uh, your heritage for NZI? Yeah, I've really, really enjoyed being with these girls. That they've, they've got a lot of character, <laughs> yep. some of our girls. Eh? And, and that follows through onto the field, not just off of the field. And, and I'm a 
big believer in in a few that was just a nice reverse hit. it was just across the face of the goal just a little touch on the on the end and that would have been in but I, I'm a strong believer that the, if the culture is good within your team, mates, you're going to have fun out on the field today, and, yep. and it's easier to work hard for people that you like. Yep. Um, so it's it's been a cool transition, and different skill sets. Eh, the Indians have different skill sets to what the Maori players do. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's um, I think if we ask the same question to them, they've loved having you there uh, this year. Oh, look at this. Yeah, great speed down the sideline, ball into oh, the circle. She fine? Oh. Oh, oh my goodness. What a ball. What a spot too for Casey Lamb in the middle of the circle. Oh, she nearly just needed to have her stick just that bit further in front of her. Yeah, you see the replay there. It just sails past uh, Isabella Holt in goal. Okay, so not to put these, you cannot think that these uh, this Asian team is going to be an easy walkover. They, have, they had things like that against us yesterday consistently. So they have plenty of exciting opportunities. They just need to get some on target. And yesterday, their goal, that reverse yep. hit to the far post, just flat. That's a Julia King, eh? That yep. is, someone taught her how to do that. I bet you it was <laughs> Julia. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was an exceptional goal. Um, and like you say, if they can just piece a couple of things in that attacking third, they can be really dangerous, um, and if there's one you know, potential pit that this multi team could fall into is, is a little bit of complacency, knowing they're already in tomorrow's final. Uh, let's hope not for their sake. Uh, one person doesn't look complacent is Penny Lopitalofo. <laughs> she only has one gear, and that's go. That's uh, that's that's a kind of a I think a style that you'll find from a lot of these multi girls is that. They're just going to go. They're going to push forward as much as they can. Yeah, that's it. We heard her speaking with Harley after yesterday's game, and uh, he asked the question, you know, do you cruise through tomorrow, or, or what's the play? And she said, no, we go for it. We go for everything. Um, in what? short format tournament, I think you have to. Isn't she a little bit impressive with her conversations that she's been having with Harley? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really cool. And that's, I think, one of the benefits of having the junior side in here. You see some of these younger players have to step up into leadership roles and, and lead by example. And, and you're right, the way that she's uh, spoken post-game has been really impressive. Ah, I really enjoyed her, what she had to say after the first game against us. Yep. Um, also being Māori as well and in the same position her, as her, I completely agree with her comments. Yeah, and again, uh, probably not to... Uh, not to put you on too much of a pedestal but you're probably one of those players blazing the path a little bit for for our young Māori wahine in that indoor and fives international space where they can look up to and, and see it's possible so um, you know don't uh, think that you're not part of that that pathway and that journey uh, as well so no very well spoken and, and uh, a real testament to uh, New Zealand Māori hockey so oh there's Garvey's on the field that was her wasn't it yeah it was yeah. Garvey up there uh, one of the uh, not junior juniors this uh, <laughs> this weekend, the babysitter. Uh, I caught up with her this morning. She said someone's got to do it. So, oh. and there it is across the goal, and it is. They had numbers up there, Brad, and and they're just a couple of them unmarked across the circle. So a really nice drive to put it across the goal. If you don't have your players marking marking those outlets, it was a beautiful goal. Yeah, that's it. As we see the replay taken quickly here by Murphy Phillips. She's fast. She's quick. She's real quick. Across it goes. One, two touches, and it's Ella Worthington on the post. I'm pretty sure it went through uh, Ahu Rahuruhi on the way as well. Yeah, a little touch from Ahu, and, and it's just... And it, it, th those are textbook, classic, get in the right positions, you're guaranteed a goal kind of goals. Yep, absolutely. And uh, you know, don't uh, dismiss the work that Ella Worthington had to do there to be in the right spot, be nice and low, uh, be in good areas and make sure that she had her stick on the ground. We've seen many of them go past the post before and um, she converted it. And speaking of converting, here's Garby Smith. She's on a run now into that same area. And they're a little bit better for it this time, the Asian side. Jess on the ball, cleaning up for them. Whoa! Oh, that's, that's, that's a good line. Yep, it is. It's a great ball through there with everybody's drifting one direction to cut back against the grain. Yeah. Uh, but it's just started to open up in these last couple of minutes. Uh, Oriwa, opportunities at both ends, obviously on the scoreboard for the Māori team, but 
Uh, they're coming for both sides. Yeah, I, th I think one thing for the Māori team is to not get too attracted to the attack. The yep. attack is super enticing and you want to go forward, but you always have to have that counter cover in place. And these, this team, if any team, is going to be the team to punish you on a counter attack. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. It's uh, keeping good processes and... Um, you know, just because you get an early one, like you said, your eyes can light up a little bit. Oh, absolutely. I know the feeling. Especially probably the midfielders more so than anything. They want to be involved and be part of it and uh, you know, just stick to process. I'm sure Courtney and Tuhia down there in the dugouts will be uh, expecting that they stick to their game plan. And like we said, it's uh, also able to prepare for tomorrow's final. Against us. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, the money's in, the TAB's on. And good pressure put on there by Shuku and goal. So we will we will talk about that. What do we? You've got uh, pretty much a semi final this afternoon, just the way the draw has worked out between your New Zealand Indian ladies taking on the Heritage Barbarians. Uh, two teams with a win and a loss so far. So oh, yeah. Uh, Forced era. Yeah, Pia Hohepa Kuka there. Now, really favouring that right side of the field. I was, at I the was moment. just thinking that they've driven that baseline three times and then the last almost like four to five minutes. Yep. And they've had successful outcomes. I think that's something that they could maybe, uh, the Asian team could maybe pay a little bit of attention to. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it goes twofold. One, being aware of it defensively, but also perhaps the Asian side try and outlet up their right side just to avoid that turnover being on the favourable side for uh, the Māori team. So it'd be interesting to see if that gets identified and um, or whether it's just coincidence and we've happened to see it a couple of times from the Māori team or if it's definitely a plan. It's a good plan. So it's a good plan. If you're driving the baseline and you just wait for that defender to hang out their reverse stick, yep. then, then it's money, money in the bag. Oh, and it goes across. That's this. an exciting play there from the Māori girls coming forward. Yeah, it was a really nice play. If we can just uh, think about that 25-yard entry, we had the New Zealand Māori player down on the T-bar, and because they've had success there on the last three or four possessions, they were then able to pass infield instead because they'd over-defended that T-bar. That That's what opened up the, um, the entry at the top of the circle. So really heads-up play oh. there. I uh, didn't quite see who it was on the ball. It might have been Roy Mata Brown over there. I believe it was Roy Mata Brown. And just weighing up her options going forward. Yeah, now we'll see the deep outlet here from the Junior Māori side. The Asians are just happy to sit in this three-quarter at the moment. There's Daniela Hall on the ball. Hall... And they've won it just around halfway. Here's Julia King. But it falls for Pia Hohepakuka for the Māori side. Well controlled and just moved around the field. Oh, here we go. Yeah, what a tackle there. Lana Charlick. It was a nice 3D pass over the stick there, but uh, Gracie Hilton-Jones cleans up well. Yeah. Just controlling the ball. Nice. Keep it on his stick here. That was very very nicely done. I mean, when you're under that much pressure, you can't really find much of a pass, so the best option is to wait. Yep. Hold yep. it and wait. That's it. Keep the ball under control. Earn the free hit and uh, get a reset here for the Māori side. Holly Hilton-Jones now looking. She's got time. A free hit coming there for Hall. Good timing for them too, because that was about to be dangerous. Yeah, yeah. She'd put on the foot and then thought she might have been able to get through. Uh, but here comes Tao Lafo on the reverse stick. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> I don't know if I was on the field there yep, then. I'll, yep. I'll probably have something to say about that. If I'm Garby Smith, I'm hands up in the air for sure. <laughs> She's got an excellent touch on that, which has gone... Uh, gone past everybody uh, but they're going to come back for just the dangerous entry from Taolofo enterprising play though what do you want probably first time we've seen them come up this left side 
actually, that is very true. And now the turnover coming just inside the attacking half for the Māori team. Hilton Jones straight to Jess Ellis. Good spot for a free man there. Now King. Oh, oh my goodness. Ball. Here's the circle entry. Here's entry. the shot. Jasmine. Oh. Oh, oh, what a shot. Mayer? Yeah, Jasmine, Jasmine Mayer yeah. there for the Asian side. You can see on the replay here, it's this pass from Julia King. Beats three quarters of the team there. And this shot. Oh, man. Great. It, it didn't call on a save, but it's not far off there. No, and it's the pressure. Sometimes just getting those balls towards goal can build the morale of your team and make them want to work harder to get there. Yeah, absolutely. Now you see them up on attack here through the long corner. Jess Ellis, and it goes. And what was yeah, that? Not five, five was the call. Oh, okay. I thought it probably did go. but I mean, it would be nice to have a little bit more flow and play in the games. Uh, marginal calls that don't really need to be called sometimes. Yes, this is a bit more press here from the Asian team. Unfortunately, they were in the right spots. It just fell through, though, for Hilton Jones, and she's... Made her way up the field yeah. into the attacking 25. And up the front there. And a lovely crossfield ball. Oh, Ella Worthington just about had two in the first quarter. Hilton Jones, lovely little skip on that one. Or do you hate those as a defender when oh. they're just coming through on a bit of a bounce? Absolutely. Even to get those... Flat, flat enough to be allowed. Yep, yep. On your reverse. Yep, That's yep. That's it. Yeah. There's King again, Julia King. Might we see her inject herself a little bit more into the game? Yeah, I'd love to see it in this oh, final man, I 90 would too. seconds. I'd love to see her perhaps playing an attacking midfielder, but. Check this out, though. Yep, Is that there we go. Oh, no, yes. There's the oh, call. Yep. I was a bit confused. Good, good, good recover. Yeah, I think the, the black uniform's just a little bit confusing there to start off with, but got the right call in the end. It's penalty corner here for the Asian side. Check this out. That's a drag. lovely drag. Uh, yeah. And then they just ran into each other, I think, the, the two Māori defenders. Yeah, Casey Lamb with yep. that drag. She did that to us a few times too. Yeah, she's uh, she's been solid up the front for the Asian side. She'll go down there and inject the ball. And we get a first look at the attacking penalty corner. They've been practicing these this morning. I don't want to put the jinx on them, but Charlick. Oh, okay. Yep, another PC. Yeah, I think it's the foot first before that challenge. That challenge, we heard the uh, crowd get up pretty animated for the defense. But Yep, and you could see that line was open. You just need to get a good touch on it. Oh! And there it is! And the first goal to the Asian side. What an amazing little just... That was a sweep, wasn't it? Yep. Straight to the close post. Very nicely delivered. Yeah, I think there was a little touch there. We'll see the replay in a second, I'm sure. I believe there was a little touch, and what a time to score right before the buzzer on the first quarter. We're all locked up here, one all between the New Zealand Asian side and the junior Māori team. Uriwa, um, what a time to score for the Asians. Yes, their first goal for the game is actually really important to have it right now. I mean, it's always difficult coming in knowing that you're a goal down, but knowing that now you've equalised is just, it's, it's a little bit of just a oomph that you have in your energy when you come back out on the field. Yeah, that's it. As we check out some of the highlights from this first quarter. This is the goal scored by the junior Māori side. Murphy Phillips, Ahumairangi Rahuruhi and Ella Worthington part of that action. Uh, but we'll see a few times here. Look at this angled run from Murphy Phillips. One touch pass. That's really good hockey from the ladies in the black singlets. And this is the change up there. That shot yeah. from Roy Mata Brown very nearly. Oh, straight across the face across of the goal. Across the goal it went. Uh, the captain, Talofo, she's been good this one. Yeah, man, that was that was actually good, a good ball into the circle. Yeah, and we've seen Garvey score screamers like that before. 
Oh, haven't we just? <laughs> Not even that long ago. That's now, it. this ball straight through the middle of the field. You just, Julia King, you can't give her anything. You can't give her the space through the middle because she can find it no matter what body position her body's in. Yep. And then, again, delivery there from Hilton Jones. This one was the effort to bring on the penalty corner. A little bit of a mix-up there at the back from the Māori ladies. And we'll have a look at these two penalty corners this is the first one going for that narrow right. You did see there off the foot of the second runner. Yep. This is the second one. They come the. Oh! It's actually deflection off the first runner. Oh, I did not see that. No, I didn't either. I didn't either. So. They were probably going for the same side. Yep. Yeah, I think when they were practicing, they were out about 35 minutes before the uh, hit off this morning, and they were running through some penalty corners, and that right side deflection, deflection, narrow right and slide right, is definitely what they were, were keying up this morning. So. Yeah, just seeing it from that angle, I'm pretty sure uh, Lana Charlick was actually going for that slide right and yeah. picked up the first runner. So, And you take a goal either way, anyway it comes, won't you, Brad? Yeah, that's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, they'll take the one-all scoreline at the moment as we see the teams together there on the sideline at the moment. Yeah, so if, if I was going back and just talking about indoor a little bit more, I, I was just watching this, is it Lisa Lamb? Uh, Casey, Casey, Casey Lamb. Lamb. Yep. Casey Lamb with her drags and, she, and that drag that she did to get the PC before, well, she did that to us plenty of times yesterday and that is a perfect indoor drag is just behind square yep. and you catch people off all the time so I, I'd, I'd be interested to see if any of these ladies try and pick up a, another version of the sport mm. um, to see if it suits their hockey style because just there's this 11 aside it's huge and it's massive but those shorter versions you can really bring out whatever your quality in the game is. Yeah that's right and as we see the teams come back out here now in the second quarter uh, it's going to be helpful for us to see who's on which team, but it's not going to be helpful for us to figure out who's who in this Asian side now that we can't see the numbers. But um, they've flipped the shirts inside out. One person I do know, of course, that's Julia King. And she perhaps has pushed herself a little further up the field for this Asian side. And here they come on attack. Boyd. Oh, another lovely drag. Good tackle, Grace Hilton-Jones. And yeah. another really good one. Yeah, very nicely, tidily cleaned up there. I yep. like the patience in her tackle there. Didn't really didn't really throw a stick in, but just waited for it to to be available. And fortunate little fall there for Hilton Jones. Can't get it through though, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a little easier on the teams there now that the uh, Asian side have flipped the shirts inside out. So if you're just joining us. This is our first game of the day. It's one all here between the New Zealand Asians and the New Zealand Junior Māori side. This is Grace Hilton-Jones for the Māori team. Couldn't link up, and here comes the running attack of the Asian side. I think the Junior Māori team can afford to be a little bit more patient um, there. They, you don't really need to be forcing anything if you're not being pressed hard. So just holding the ball around the back and they'll be able to wait to find open opportunities. Yeah, we spoke about it earlier in that first quarter, uh, just not falling into the complacency of being up a goal and, and uh, throwing everything forward and being a little bit over eager. Uh, just trying to keep, keep periods of possession, build up play. It's only the second quarter. And again, some uh, reminiscent of indoor skills there. The two tacklers just setting Flat up. Sticks. Yep. Yeah, very nice. And nice little touch there from Murphy Phillips up the line through Leithers. But just got a little wrong there off the edge of the stick. And uh, while well, we have you here, another uh, string to your bow, of course, is the creation of the uh, Hippie Sports uh, Club that you, uh, you know, founded last year down in the Rotorua region. Started off, you know, as creating opportunities and, and obviously now you've got pathway to some intercity success, you've got kids programs, you've got uh, mixed abilities programs. Uh, talk to us a little bit about some of the work in that space 
uh, with the Hippie Sports? Uh, yeah, it's just a, a, you when you know you, you grow up and you have you come from a place that isn't like Auckland or North Harbour or Wellington that have programs coming out of their ears mm. for for kids to come and join. You've got to you've got to give something back to the community, don't you? Especially when when you've done so much in your career, and so this is just a perfect opportunity for me to do it. Um, giving back to the kids. Um, giving back to women, eh? I think uh, I, I like seeing all the women out here, and there are a couple of mums out playing, mm. um, which is difficult in New Zealand to be a mum and to play hockey. Um, I don't think the environment caters for women to be playing at an elite level. Uh, so we just want to provide an opportunity to play into the city, which is the highest level that we can play in our region. Um, but also, if you have a life and you have kids and you work full time and you study, it's it's okay. You don't have to be there 24-7. Um, so, yeah, providing that for, for our women. And then we've, I've had a lot of sex, success with getting some girls playing indoor, and they've had some international experience yep. with that now. Um, and I'd love to give that to our Māori girls uh, in our region because, uh, I'm going to be honest, Brad, people don't look at them. People yep. don't look at us down at Otorua. So it's an amazing to, have, to be able to help give those kind of opportunities to our ladies um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You speak about um, some of those, you know, international. It was the junior indoor stuff that uh, a couple of your ladies were involved in. Some of the younger players in the team going over to represent New Zealand in Australia um, earlier this year. So, you know, you're right. It's creating pathways for um, a wider New Zealand to be involved in. Um, you know, and if if the sport is genuine about wanting to be inclusive and, and representative of the country then these sort of things have to happen so absolutely and this is why i this kaupapa is just so cool for me i just love seeing all the different cultures out here yep. because we don't see that a lot yep. at, when you get to the higher levels of hockey around new zealand yeah absolutely absolutely but there's no reason why it shouldn't be uh, no so no, full credit to you and the team and, and those involved down there at, at Hippie Sports and Utsuru. I know it's not just yourself alone, um, but awesome work providing opportunities and platforms for um, you know the community down there and to strive for and, and achieve at the highest level. So no, really cool. If you're not sure what we're talking about, jump onto Facebook or Instagram and, and check out Hippie Sports. Um, see some of the cool work that um, what are we and the team are doing down in Rutsurua? Uh, back out here, we've had a little bit of back and forth. A couple of uh, circle entries, I think, through the for the junior Māori side. Nothing, though, um, too troubling for Shuku and goal. And now just a little bit of uh, spray off the stick there. Gracie, she'll come and have a rest. And we'll bring Daniela Hall and Amy McConnell onto the field for the junior Māori side. Oh my goodness. Straight across the field, you love that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> Two passes almost right to the other corner of yep. the field. Yeah, and that's what we're saying. Don't underestimate this Asian side. They haven't had the results this weekend, but it's right there. And, and look, it's just going to take this first tournament or two tournaments together to really start to see the uh, the shine on this New Zealand Asian side. And here's one who always shines, Penny Lopitalofo. Lovely pass, Murphy Phillips. In fact, it's Sinead Phillips out Circle there. Circle entry, Garvey looking for something. Play on, says the umpire. Nothing in that. Yep, big swing and uh, not a huge amount of ding, but... <laughs> it did bounce its way into the circle, just knowing there for the Māori I side. Do, I do like people trying to do that skill, though, that that skill is amazing if you have no space which she didn't have yep. just a shame she didn't execute that well but that's it being able to get it onto the back foot there's not many people that are you know can execute it really well every time it's a tough skill to master um but yeah Gabby Smith I think she scored a goal off it yesterday in their match Ooh. Ooh. and they're just not going to be able to pull that one in though Okay, so Brad, there is one thing that I've been thinking about for this Asian team is that the strikers, 
they just they are quite flat with each other and yep. there's no one quite high enough to be able to get those long balls that do end up coming through and i think because they've had quite a few long balls they could be a little bit more yeah, I'd love to see perhaps a, a triangle set up or a spine set up from their strikers, uh, a little bit more layered up the field just to give a, an extra target or a second layer. Yeah, and, and if you do have a striker closer to the baseline, it is easier for them to run and get those long balls yep. than if you're hanging around the 25, you're probably going to miss them. Yeah, it's an interesting point you bring up, actually, because I mentioned the same thing with the Heritage Barbarians ladies uh, yesterday they fell into some similar traps with their striker line just flat across the field. And when players like Kai Elliott trying to take things quickly and throw balls forward, they just didn't have the second layer depth to, to pick a lot of them up. So I think we're seeing the same thing out here from this, uh, this Asian side. And the more that Julia King promotes herself into that midfield, even more important for those strikers to be on good layers because she's going to throw a good ball through there. Uh, and they don't want it to go to waste not when they've definitely got the skill to be able to finish them if they were to have someone up there. And here's Daniela Hall linking up there with Talofo. Still going, Talofo. Still got it. There's the entry and the penalty corner. It was a touch off Ella Worthington. Stick finds the foot of the defender there. And into the goal. We'll have a look at the replay here. Really good strength to keep that one. And yep, just the touch there from the goal scorer in Worthington onto the foot there of the Asian defender. Yeah, really nice to know that even though Julie got a touch on that when she was dribbling, that she could turn and roll it into the circle because she did have players in there. So just to release that quickly was a good option. Nicely collected by the goalkeeper there, straight to her pads, but in they come with a second entry. Yeah, good solid save there from Shuku and goal for the Asian team. Um, just a little bit of note on the penalty corner there. Um, dead trap, so Talofa had to roll it forward for herself first and then hit it. Probably just took away a little bit of the time and a little bit of the power from... Uh, what she was trying to execute. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it looks like she has a little bit of a bigger bunt. You need a bigger bunt yep. for her. Her step it looks a bit looks big. So really the execution of those skills at the PC will determine whether the whatever you're supposed to do at the top is successful or unsuccessful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. And I think that's um you know, going back to the Heritage Barbarians game yesterday, that what makes somebody like Kayla Val so impressive is her ability to you know, regardless of the trap, some of them got away on her a little bit. Just gets them going goalward really well. Um, so it's a skill to develop, and Kayla's probably one of the best ones at it. Uh, so, yeah, just tidying up some of those penalty corner skills, and none tidier than Garby Smith <laughs> in the middle of <laughs> the was, circle. That was easy pickings for Garby. Garby Smith makes the one of the most difficult skills look easy there as we see this replay. Talofo delivered it. And we're not going to see it on that camera angle. Um, hopefully we get another one at the halftime break. But uh, I would say, though, at this tournament, deflections. That's her bread and butter, oh, man. Uh, she's one of the best. Um, one of the best at it. We saw it at last year's Heritage. We saw it at New Zealand Multi Tournament. Um, that my, still my favourite one is from the one from Multi Tournament. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Even from that angle, how do you get it from that high <laughs> up in the circle? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for those unfamiliar, uh, it was heartbreak for one side, uh, but an excellent goal. Garby Smith scored. It was a deflection, yeah, from pretty much the top of the oh, circle. Oh, it was incredible. Yeah. Uh, changed the angle completely of the ball and uh, beat everybody, including the goalkeeper. So It was even on a weird angle, yeah. too. Yeah. Like. Yeah, no surprises that that one was Garby's and uh, they restore their lead now at the Junior Māori side 2-1 here over the New Zealand Asian team and not to put the New Zealand Asian team down at all because they have they have been having attacks not as much as what the New Zealand Māori have had but they've had their fair share of attacks through the circle yeah they have they, and they've started to build up we've mentioned a couple of times Julia King pushing herself forward but here comes Garby Smith again driving Delivering it. Just a little too close, I think, to the goalkeeper there. There's a little bit of a, a pile-up of players. Yeah. 
Let me see this. Uh, this is the goal. <laughs> That, that, that was just really unmarked. Nice. Unmarked. Yep. You cannot leave players like her unmarked no, in the circle. Absolutely not. Have to win front position on her. Yeah, it's a really nice goal there. It's Tolofo, the delivery, and, and Garby Smith. A, a very nice delivery, too. So yep. nice and hard. So the deflection, it makes the deflection easy. And just ball at the back here for the junior Māori side. Trinell Woods, Edueta can't pick the gap. Good turnover by Jess in the middle. Oh, she didn't, she didn't quite, she wasn't able to let that ball go, but she had got those two defenders flat, and if that had gone through, that would have been a, a nice little run for their striker to have. Yeah, and again, uh, almost unmarked in the circle, Shnara Marshall. She loves that little, uh, it's almost an indoor skill, just keeping the ball trapped in the hook and um, flaring either yeah. way. It is, it's a nice indoor skill to have outdoor because you yep. don't see it often. Here's Rahuruhi. She's beating the goalkeeper. First scramble is good. Second one, though, saved by Shuku Morimoto. The shot coming there through Murphy Phillips. Again, I'm just, I am quite impressed with Murphy Phillips. I really, I really like the speed in which she plays that. And she plays with the ball on her stick. Makes yep. her harder to tackle. Yep, she is uh, you know, really developing her skill set as a midfielder. And uh, she's playing, been playing her hockey here in North Harbour for the last couple of years. Originally coming down from Northland. Um, and yeah, we see her develop further and further every year at this Heritage Tournament. Here come the Asian side up towards halfway. The time on the ball. It can't get through. It's good positioning from Pia Hohepakuka and the pressure from Garby Smith. And around they go again. They've transferred the ball pretty well this morning, uh, this junior Māori side, considering they're predominantly playing with a back three. Uh, looks like they'll fall out to a four at the moment, but predominantly back three and, and transferring shape pretty well. Uh, actually, if you if you do watch them, they are in a back three, but they roll really nicely out into a back four mm. as well, which makes it even more difficult for the Asian team to defend, um, especially if you end up promoting really well and they get the ball up the other side of the field. Oh, that's a skill we haven't seen too much of today is the, the little overhead. Yeah, it was... Uh Daniela Hall over there just it found some space too. It, in, in a very cramped area. Yep. I was surprised about that. Yeah, I probably wasn't sure about throwing it, but yeah, it just fell to some space there. And uh, they've kept possession now, though a little mistake in the midfield will bring the Asian side into possession. Just Alice here throwing the ball forward. Bit of speed on the attack here by the Māori girls, and we don't have anyone up front, so it is a 1v1. She wins her 1v1. Rahuruhi, that one gets Oh, that's a big away. <laughs> I, I don't think I've seen her do that before, big uh, swinging. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to tell you, though, Rahuruhi has some crazy stick skill, and she, she just makes you swing your stick further and further <laughs> until you're out of control with your swing. She's done it to me plenty of times. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, it sounded like that was spoken <laughs> from experience. <laughs> Absolutely is. And there is the final hooter on our second quarter. It's half time here in our first women's game of the day. We're going to go to a short ad break and back with some of the highlights from the first half.
Welcome back here to the North Harbour Hockey Centre, the National Hockey Centre and the home of New Zealand Heritage Hockey 2024. Half time here in our first game of the day. It's the New Zealand Junior Māori team up 2-1 over the New Zealand Asian side in the women's bracket. Oriwa, it was a um, fast start from the Māori team. They scored pretty early. Uh, but then a, an impressive answer back from the Asian side just capped off by an exciting goal in the uh, end of that second quarter by Garby Smith. What have you liked so far about either side? Um, I, I really enjoy just watching the, this new team, this Asian team, come together. And they've actually gotten better every time I think that they've played. So their first game they went down quite a bit to the Heritage team. And then yesterday they just they managed to keep us at bay for a long time and yep. this one that they're, they're in this competition yep. uh not not to discredit the amazing opportunities that these multi girls have created for themselves the circle entries have been far superior to the to the other teams and uh, they've managed to capitalize with some really impressive goals um, so those are the two things I pretty much liked about most of the teams and it is cool to see the different styles like the Asians are really relying on on sending those big balls and having breakthrough attacks whereas if you watch the Māori girls they are that building they're building the, to their circle entries around the T-spot yep. which is a hard thing to get teams to do so the T-spot entry is really cool and then once they are winning that T-spot game a lot then they're, they're starting to come through the top yeah that, that's it and it's um, if you see some of the uh, the goal scoring from that first half that was the Asian goal off the penalty corner uh, but you're right this uh, both sides have, have really started to lean into what they're good at and what their strengths are uh, we talk about teams developing over the four days of tournament both teams have started to um, you know really find out what their identity is uh, which is exciting uh, especially for this Asian side their first time at the tournament their first time as an entity and first time ever together um, for me, it becomes an exciting prospect of well, where can this Asian product go. Um, we just were talking off camera about, um, you know, the wide range of, of Asian players that we know up and down the country that, man, if we can get them all together and get them here, this could really develop into a, a strong entity year on year at Heritage. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that cultural diversity is the celebration that we want to keep going. Um, and, and just having those different pathways for those younger kids to, to keep playing um, and have some really cool experience around you. I mean, like, how often can people say that they came out and played a tournament with the likes of Julia King? You know, that's, I mean, although she's just she's just here to play and to nurture the game, I mean, it's an, it's an amazing thing for these young kids to be able to come out here and do. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Uh, as we see the teams coming out here at the moment, 2-1, there's nothing in it at the moment. Um, the Māori side unbeaten through the tournament so far. They're two for two uh, coming into day three and have booked themselves a spot in tomorrow's gold medal match. The Asian side, well, they're uh, winless coming in, but you wouldn't pick that that's the difference between the two sides at the moment. Uh, and I, I said in the build-up that day three can throw up surprises, can throw up upsets and, and twists and turns. And uh, look, if this Asian side can, can pick one goal back here or get themselves to level terms by the end of the third quarter... Uh, this could be a real exciting uh, contest come the last 17 minutes. And then straight into it, the Māori <laughs> girls are an entry through that baseline T-spot again and across the base, the, the face of the goal. Now, that's happened quite a few times for them. I would say that as a coach, I'd be really asking questions of my strikers to be getting touches on those because that has happened uh, maybe four times in the game already. Yeah, I was just about to ask, what do you think some of the messaging has been? Just as we've seen that a few times now from the Maldives side, they're getting good entry, they're good and good breach in that right T-bar or, or right side of the, the circle, but going a little bit un, uh, uncapitalised through that first half. I'm sure both Courtney and Tuhia um, are probably trying to implore them just to be a little bit better in their uh, positioning, in their delivery and the execution in that uh, attacking circle. Oh, there we go. Meanwhile, the, the Asian side, there is execution uh, from Julia King. And they'll win it just outside the circle. 
And, uh, you know, just going back and talking about that circle across the face of the goal, it's really anticipation goes a long way too as that striker to get there and just cue in with the person on the ball to know when to get into that space. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's about proactive positioning and, and uh, like you say, keying in with the delivery and um, all about timing in there. You know, it's easy to get into a good spot, then the defender just steps in front of you anyway. So um, there are some little nuances that come with, with playing up there. Um, but if you want to go and ask someone how to do it, they've got Gabby Smith out there, and <laughs> I'd be uh, I'd be heading to her uh, for some uh, for some tips. She's excellent in that attacking circle. She is, but once she's the one driving the baseline, you've <laughs> yeah, got to. That's it. That's yep. it. We can't all just rely on uh, on Gabby to do it. So uh, no, it's cool to to have her out here. I think for this younger side, we mentioned it's a junior Maldi side, but a couple of. Um, senior players just coming in to help um, due to some late uh, withdrawals from the junior side uh, so Sinead Phillips and uh, Gabby Smith out there oh man I would have been oh I want that <laughs> shot don't call <laughs> yeah. that ball that's why we love having you up here or do we get a real player's perspective of, <laughs> of those little little moments I had the circle entry just let me go yeah yeah and there's the penalty corner now coming for the Asian side uh, Just high um, fives is there. that Holly asking a bit of a question of the umpire? Wouldn't be. Wouldn't Couldn't be. be. <laughs> well, uh, she, does, she doesn't normally do that. So No, I think so she just must. questioning there about that stick um, coming free. I don't think it was hers. I think it was Murphy Phillips' stick, actually, um, coming free in <laughs> the circle there. Th this is interesting. That huddle around the five-meter the five mark, not yep. around the circle. Yeah. I know um, our goalkeeper got a little bit of a, a questioning by the umpire for coming too close to the huddle. <laughs> Here we go. Oh! Oh, wow. Oh, man. That little uh, slider there from Jess Ellis, reverse stick this time, going on the near side, little change up from the Asian side. They went right twice early. That one, oh, it was a heck of a deflection, man. If that had uh, just had a little less angle on it. Yeah, that went really high for yeah, a deflection. It, it did, it did. And uh, straight down the other end, though, here come the Māori side. Oh, nice. Hilton Jones, she's in. She's nifty. In comes the team support. And free hit out there for the Asian side. Uriwa, we can hear the, uh, I assume, probably predominantly Māori crowd out in front of us uh, <laughs> crying for, for a penalty corner. Yeah, I didn't quite see what happened there. I don't have much of a comment, but <laughs> that was definitely a bit of a, of a loud roar. I'm guessing you'd be able to hear that on the TV too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, we love the supporters coming out bright and early for the first game of the day. Uh, it's a good solid crowd here. Easter Sunday, of course. What else do you want to do on your Easter Sunday yeah, other than watch it. some hockey? Bring your Easter eggs and your hot cross buns along to the turf. That being said, if you're in and around the area, Auckland, Tamaki Makoto, the North Shore, um, get on down here to the National Hockey Centre and check out some of this heritage hockey. Free hit here for the Junior Māori side, and it goes... And there's the shot. Saved by Shuku Morimoto. Very nice. She came out quite far to challenge that, so that was a nice reading of the play. Yeah, just trying to shut down the angles there of Murphy Phillips. And this Maldi side, it's getting a little bit scrappy here. The Asian team just can't get things going forward, though. Oh, that's unfortunate. And picked up by Pia Hohepakuka. They just seem to. Players I, was gonna, I was gonna say they just seem to have another and another and another yes. player there. The the half trap turned into a great pass <laughs> two or three times there. <laughs> I thought exactly the same thing. Oh, they've run out of it and another player's there. That's good supporting play by the team. Yep, absolutely. Oh, check that out. Yeah, that's some of the maturity I've, I've really been impressed uh, to see over the last sort of 18 months from Holly Hilton Jones. Usually, you see young players there kind of daring a headlights when a striker comes running at her and uh, 
perhaps gets turned over or perhaps just hits a ball to a wing half. Instead, calm, inside drag, see you later, and then delivers a, a good quality ball. A very ball. good ball into yep. the circle, yep. Yeah, she was she she came a long way in the fives. Eh? It was mm -hmm. really cool to watch. And then coming out in the final game, um, in our final game, she was just way so composed. Yep. It was really cool. Yeah, and here she is again for the junior Maldi side. So this is ball around the back at the moment. The Asian side just happy to sit in their shape at the moment, slide along. Just inside their own half. And uh, one touch pass, so it cut out. Oh. Oh. Great receive. Garby Smith. Oh, she tried the chip and chase. Uh, we just got a little bit big on her in the end. But I love the enterprise from Garby. She, uh, if she's anywhere near the circle, she's going at it. Yep. And yep. Uh, makes it hard to defend. There's one thing that I do love about these Māori girls is that uh, they want the goal. Yep. They want the goal. And to be fair, they're not looking for the foot. <laughs> no. They're looking for the goal. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, let's close in. Just, uh, just more than nine minutes left to play in this third quarter, about halfway through the third quarter here. It's no change to that halftime scoreline of 2-1 in favour of the Māori side. There's Julia King out there just directing some of her troops around. Oh, a nice little touch there. Yeah, great tackle. And they'll win the free hit as well, the Asian team. Do you know what would be interesting, Brad, if we had the ages of some of these players? Because some of these girls look really young, but they're doing some really impressive things. Yeah, that's it. We'll see if we can, uh, we can get some of that info up from the middle uh, so we can figure out, you know, just... Uh, just the experience levels of some of these players, because you're right, you know, that a lot of them are playing well above their uh, their age. And I know certainly some of this multi team very young, um, 16, 17. Some of these players out here. Let's see, this is the multi side coming forward through Roma to Brown. The whistle coming. Strong challenge by Ahumairangi. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we've just got, got info up now. Uh, Britta Lawrenson out there for the Asian side. Uh, she's just 15. Uh, and following that, a handful of 17 and 18-year-olds. Um, Violet Liu also out there at 15. Uh, so, yeah, a young side, this Asian team. Yeah. Uh, really impressive what they've been able to to put together at such short notice. Uh, like we said, debut tournament, first time together, and out here competing with uh, the unbeaten New Zealand Junior Māori side. <laughs> A little bit of miscommunication there. We heard it through on the uh, the cameras. I got it, I got it, and then nobody really had yep. it. Uh, the one it there through Jess Alice. I think another thing for me anyway to note is not just the younger ages, but the older ages of players that are still coming out and playing at this one. Oh, this is a nice carry though. Yeah, and they've and got the remains, recycle. Yeah, yeah, that's nice there. Hopefully some targets going forward. There they are. There's that drag you loved. Oh, and on the oh, foot. Come play some indoor, girl. <laughs> yeah, that's great build up too. What I really liked was that first little breach in towards the dotted circle. Saw she had three players on her, gave Maintain this lateral position. pass. Yep. Yep. I, I love that. There's very good composure. And then this, little one, two, and on the foot. Yep. There's a lot of space to be had in your own space. Yep. You know, and if players get to utilize that really well, they'll be successful in what they tr are trying to achieve. Yeah, that's where you see, I think, the, uh, the danger of those V-drag style things where players can move their off foot and create that space under them rather than only playing what's in front. Yeah. So, uh, really it's good a good to see. skill, yep. yeah. There we go, penalty corner for the Asian side. They scored off one earlier. And, uh, big. Or in a quick counter-attack if she can get it. Oh, just outran all of them. Uh, it would be interesting to see that replay. I think the deflection came back out off the attacking player. 
Uh, we might get to see it here. Yeah, off Jess Ellis again playing at that narrow left. So they've gone to that narrow left twice in a row now after having some success going to slide right. Uh, but you're just not getting the stick angle right on that one. I think it came higher than she expected as well. Yeah, accurate delivery and good positioning of the play. Just it's that last execution of it, isn't it? That the angle of the stick. Uh, to be fair, if they keep going for these styles of penalty corners, if it comes off, there's no chance it gets saved. There's oh, absolutely. There's absolutely no way that a goalkeeper's seeing it or a defender's stopping it. If they get it right, these style of deflections and at that sort of pace... It's guaranteed. Yeah. It's just at a higher level. Oh, that's an exciting bit of Here play. Here we go. If she can keep the ball. Well done, Grace Hilton-Jones. Yeah. Calm. She's actually really impressed me today. Well, actually over the whole tournament. Yeah, she's, uh, you know, come back from uh, a bit of an injury late in last 18 months or so. Uh, has come back looking really good. Uh, competed in an Ironman uh, series in Tauranga a little while Has ago. Has she just? Yeah, she's uh, a real athlete, Grace. Oh, I like that kind of circle entry there from Jess. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Just asking your striker to get get there. Yep. She wasn't too far off of it either. Lisa Zhao, maybe that. No, twelve. And here we come through Schnarr at Marshall. <laughs> I think fooled her even her own players where that one was going. Uh, this is danger signs here. This is Julia King. Oh, lovely pass across the circle. What she can do. Oh. I like the advantage if that striker had been able to get to it, but penalty corner coming. And again, really good build up for this Asian side. They're getting some confidence. They won the ball up pretty high there, 25 yard line. Oh, look at that pass though. Yep. And then across, uh, good ideas, great ideas. And that's what we were talking about, I, th I believe it was Sam, with Sam Hewitt yesterday when we were watching one of the men's games. Just the ability for a striker to drift off the left foot of the defender, create that passing channel through there, which becomes so hard to defend and it makes it look easy, uh, but it's a really good skill to have. It does, eh? It does look easy, but it's hard to, it's hard to do. Great there drag. Go. Corner, good there's trap. the layoff. Well, there was a bit of a channel through there. It I would, was, I would have liked to it, see eh? a little bit, yeah, oh. a little bit more on that one. Um, that perceived pressure, though, you think you don't have enough time. She definitely had some time, yeah, and that was, line was open. Yeah, there's plenty of time there. Um, like we say, it just gave the defenders enough time to reposition, get a good deflection or trap on it, rather than uh, you know going goalward. So, a little change up shown there by the Asian team in their penalty corners. And here they come now, the junior Māori side. There's a nice pass. Pia Hohepa oh, can another Oh, another nice one. pass. She's Ahu. danger. Oh. And again, Oriwa, I don't, we don't mean to harp on about it, but just positioning in the attacking circle, probably letting them down a little bit there. Oh, here's a hitter. She, she didn't connect that very no, well. No, no. I think she hit the same divot Dan, Dan Scanlon did yesterday. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah. Same, similar spot. Oh, look at the skill. Chip and chase. Too bad she didn't chip it a bit closer to herself to recollect that. Mm. But yeah, again, really good entry up this right side. Ball went across the circle, but just not players in those areas. Players in the circle, though, Brad. In the circle, absolutely. In the circle, but uh, yeah, just not quite on point. Again, this Asian side up pretty high on that centre press there. Unfortunately, there's nobody on that side of the field. Uh, so some space there to be had by Amy McConnell. You need that striker working back for the Asian yep. side because you don't want her running, Penny running free with the ball. Yeah, that's it. And uh, she did well to hold it up, just trying to see the lines that the opposing strikers were going to run on. Uh, just got a little bit ahead of Grace Hilton-Jones there. Oh, great little intercept there. She's got players either side of her. Back into the middle. Oh, now it comes and again. A little messy, but they've picked it up there through Marshall. Oh. There she is. It's a spinning top somewhere, that one <laughs> Yeah, is. it is. I was going to say, you've got one of those in your side. Oh, I do. <laughs> it's a nice, it's a nice skill. 
And here's Trinell Wazitawita. Just plays it onto the foot there of the Asian striker. Let's see what they can build up this right side now. Yeah, nothing there this time for them, but an opportunity perhaps to put a press on. Yeah, this is a very difficult situation to get out of as a defending player. would rather go out of the baseline. Well, that'll work. Yep. You chuck it on the foot and march yourself forward an extra 15 yards. Now this becomes a bit easier. Oh, Especially and if the overhead, overhead that goes yep. over four players. And that's the uh, end of our third quarter here. Still 2-1 to the Junior Maldi side over the New Zealand Asians and uh, no change to that halftime score. Audio, we've got an exciting 17 minutes left in this match and uh, you know, can we see the Asian side steal one? Oh, I, I mean, uh, you know, I, I love these Maldi girls but a good challenge for them would be if, if these Asian girls really brought it to them. And I'd love to see it, you know, the underdogs. I'm, I'm all about the underdog um, and they have been showing some promise. Yeah, and as we look at some of these highlights here, I think there'll be one point on either side that they really want to focus on for the Māori team. It's just their positioning, correct positioning inside the attacking circle when that breach happens. If they can get on top of that, there's going to be real opportunities. On the other side, this Asian team, they've had three or four penalty corners that quarter and just yeah. couldn't get anything you know, really executed well um, to trouble the defensive group of the Māori team. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think if you were to talk about this Asian's at attack their goal opportunities from field play probably aren't the strongest, yep. not like what the Māori girls are, but it's this PC option that, if anything, I would say would be their saving grace. Well, that's it, and it's how they scored their first goal, of course, the, uh, the deflection off the first runner. Um, I'd love to see them just execute that last 10% at the penalty corner because um, that could be all it takes for them to get back to level playing terms with this Māori team. Yeah, yeah, and and if the conversation with the strikers has been made at uh, this quarter time for the Māori girls, it, it could be easy for them to slot away another two or three goals, uh, and just capitalise on those strengths that they already have. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely right. But one thing um, which is pretty apparent: both teams getting better over the weekend. Both teams looking strong. Um, but really, this Asian team going from strength to strength and competing, like I said, with the unbeaten junior Māori side. Uh, they'll be really proud of their performance so far. Yeah. And we're back underway here. Fourth quarter, 17 minutes left for perhaps the upset of the weekend. Yes, this girl. She's she's showing some confidence. Yeah, absolutely. Which is hard to do against some, some really good players. Oh. Yeah, it's unfortunate we've lost the numbers off the backs of the jerseys for the uh, Asian team. We can't quite identify some of the players out there as they feel uh, perhaps a little hard done by from the earlier tackle. Oh, well, did she just nutmeg herself? <laughs> and then it ended up being a quite a successful pass? Yeah, there were a couple of uh, Asian defenders up near halfway, thinking that they probably should have won a free hit earlier up the field. But the Māori side kept going, kept pushing, and uh, they've got themselves down for a penalty corner. We'll have a look at the replay quickly here. It's Ahu under the leg. Nice little pass there. The Rutsurua girls linking up, yeah, Ahu and, yep. and Pia. They know each other well. They've been playing in the same kura together as well. Mm -hmm. In the same club together. Oh, no, Pia's up here, isn't she now? I think. Phillips pulls it out. It's going to Brown for the layoff. Well read, oh. though. Do we have a counter-attack here, Brad? Yep, big opportunity for it. It's five on four and plenty of space for the Asians. Okay, just well cleaned up that. Oh, I'll be very disappointed with that attack. Yeah, they just couldn't find that second pass. The first one, a gem, gem down there to the, the dotted circle, but just couldn't get the next pass going. Uh, really good positioning at the back there. I think it's Amy McConnell for the junior Māori side. Yeah, and she's patient as ever. Yeah. 
And now opportunity back up the front for the multi team. Here is Brown. Great save, Shuku. Oh. Open goal for Pene Lope Taulafu to push them out to three goals. Again, Brad, that corner is a very difficult corner to get out of, and the Māori girls recognise that, pressed them hard in there, turn the ball over, attack into the circle, followed yep. up by all the players, and bang, straight into the goal. Yeah, and, and she deserves it there because she had the entry to probably take the shot herself the first time, Pene, but instead laid it off to Roimata, who she thought was in a better spot. Ahu got a little touch there in front of Shuku, who made a great first save, but um, can't really control the rebound there. And Penelope Talofo uh, extends the lead back for the junior multi side up to 3 1 now. And uh, for all hopes we had of the upset, it's just become uh, exponentially harder here yep. for this Asian side. Definitely much harder, but just commending Shuku Murimoto yep. in the goal, man. It's, it's amazing to have uh, older players out there, and she's really bossing it around today, uh, only letting. Three goals in with the amount of attacks that she's had against her. Yeah. That's really impressive. Yeah, and I thought she was phenomenal in the game yesterday as well. Um, like we said, really kept you guys out for long periods of the game. Um, Shuku, she won't mind me saying she's uh, 43. Oh, Brad, I didn't say that on purpose. Uh, one of the real stars <laughs> out there, Shuku. Um, you know, a real character around North Harbour and uh, played Masters this year for North Harbour. Uh, absolute legend in goal. Oh, wow. That was a lovely drag. It was. It's hard to catch legs. that through the legs. Yep. <laughs> Julia King making people look silly. And just going to fall there. The outlet, though, still with the Asian side. If you notice now, Brad, this wasn't happening before, but this Asian team's getting a little bit dis disjointed from the person on the ball in the next pass forward. And this is where this multi team's doing really good to position their players in between and make it a real easy turnover for them. Yeah, I think they probably, um, coming out of that third quarter break, were probably just going to see if they could throw some stuff at it and pile some extra players forward. And that does mean a little bit more space in between the players and... It hasn't paid off uh, early for this uh, team. But, look, those are only things that they'll learn from and uh, experiences that they've got to go through as a team. So, um, yeah, well capitalised on by the junior multi side. And it came back to that press. You said they put on to score that goal. It's where it all really started. Yeah, not five. Not even attempting to get five. I like that effort to get off the field, though. Yeah, love that. No arguing, just straight off. Good on her. Yeah, Amy McConnell, I'm pretty sure it was. Now this, Brad, if any time, is the time to try and capitalise. Yeah, absolutely. A player down. Oh, and I thought they very nearly had an opportunity. Oh. Well saved there, Izzy Holt. The ball just bumbling in front of the keeper yep. just for a moment. But the New Zealand Māori team doing well to regain possession and clear that off their keeper's pads. Yeah, and just um, quickly back to the other goalkeeper, Shuku. It's not her first Heritage Tournament. Uh, she was involved with the Heritage Barbarians in year two of New Zealand Heritage Hockey. Um, up in, or down from here, down in Papatoitu when we were at Colmar the second time. Um, so good to have her back here now with the Asian team. What a pass. <laughs> Easy reverse blade down the sideline from Julia King, but one back by Grace Hilton-Jones. And they'll come back for the earlier indiscretion. So Grace does Ironmans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A real uh, multi-sport athlete. Uh, both she and her mum, uh, June, who I'm sure is probably watching along. Um, yeah, absolute weapons. We're part, uh, I think came over for the Tauranga Half Marathon and Ironman and whatever was going on a couple of uh, weeks ago. Yeah, I've heard they've done some crazy things like uh, around the circuit of Tongariro and yep, yep. Ruapehu and stuff. There's there's a name for a competition around there, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, right. Yeah, so right involved with that. And not just Gracie. Holly gets into some of that multi-sport stuff as well, but yeah. Gracie certainly at a national level. Very athletic family there. Yeah, yeah, and of course they're... Uh, their dad, a long-time servant of the uh, of Northern Rugby, 
uh, in his time too. Played many a games for the Tanifa uh, back Is in the that day. That's true. Yep. Yep. Not the things I learn in the commentary box. <laughs> yeah. Half of them are just stories to be fair, but, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think that's right. That one true. That one is true. I, I do know the, the Hilton Jones family pretty well. And uh, no, good to have both the girls out there, twin sisters, of course, uh, for the junior Māori side. Yeah. Not that you could tell that they're twins. No, it's it's uh, it's funny that as I've got older, they've started to look more and more less alike. <laughs> Taking quickly. I oh, like this from the Asian side. Excuse me. Yeah. Why would you call that? <laughs> I really like this. Taking it oh. quickly. Trying to have a crack at this New Zealand junior Māori team. And here we go. Oh, just cut out. And it's over the back line there. There's been a couple of opportunities there. I would have liked to see that first free hit be allowed to be taken. Oh, she I caught would the too. defender already on She her would have been feet. on yep. the baseline along it. There's, uh, again, good bit of pressure shown from this Asian team. It's a little disjointed, but I like that they're trying. I like that they're putting some pressure on. Yeah, yeah. And ball here for the Asians. Just crabbing across the field. Oh, nice foot in the middle of the circle. Oh, circle. Middle of the field. Middle of the field. Jeepers. And uh, as we just have ball over the sideline there, Oriwa, uh, we mentioned a little bit earlier, big game for you ladies today. Um, you know, what, are, what do you guys do in terms of preparation? Obviously, you've got about well, two and a half, three hours from now. What's the, the plan and prep for your ladies? Uh, ba basics, a lot of basics, eh? like looking after your body, fueling the body. We yep. had a good session this morning. Um, and going over, again, what what is a culture that we're good at doing, Brad? Mm -hmm. I mean, and working on those as our foundation of how we're going to play our game today. Yep. Um, and I think that's really important, especially since this tournament is about cultural diversity, is to really let shine the skills that mm. each culture has. Um, so obviously coming out with a lot of pressure is what we're going to be hoping to do. But hopefully this um, Asian team out here can can just capitalise on another one of their PCs. Yeah, love to see it here. Asian team just sails past the near post there of Julia King. Again, uh, penalty corners coming for this Asian side, but just lacking the execution I mean, I know all about that. We've had a very poor track record this <laughs> tournament of our taun of our PCs. We had a couple of gold goodies, but oh, she keeps it in. Oh, oh, oh. I, I definitely <laughs> thought that was in, but I thought it was pretty close as well. But um, the umpire is right there. She made a roundabout of her. Actually, yeah. had to go around. <laughs> Carpy did, and. Uh, yeah, must have been only millimetres in it. Our spectators down in front of us thought so as well. Uriwa. Yeah. Uh, but from the sounds of things, they're big Garby Smith fans here, so... Oh, who wouldn't be? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's no reason why you could be playing for another team and still not be a fan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, just one other question in terms of your game coming up. How do you guys try and look to eliminate the um, the danger of someone like Kai Elliott for the Heritage team? Oh, okay. So, so we'll go back to that question. Yep. But another great opportunity for them to really capitalise on um, having a player up at the moment. So what can they push forward? And then they just need to make sure they keep these players like Garvey Smith under control. Yeah. Because she's yeah. coming back for she everything. Is. She you is. You fool her once, she's coming back <laughs> yeah. to get you. Yeah. Um, players like Kaya Elliott, uh, you, as long as you're patient in what you do and you do your job and you do your job well, it, do, it makes it easier to help um, as a defensive crew to help coordinate how you're going to defend players. Yeah. When, when you start coming out and swinging your stick out, and yeah. Kaya's just going to make you look like a cone. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's probably the key to most of those sorts of players is if you look after your own, you know, you say you look after your own backyard first, 
you get your role sorted and and uh, and organised, it's a lot easier then to just create areas to contain or yep. create places to trap and those sorts of things. You um, do things like don't let them come through your legs and then yep. the defenders behind you can shape off of you. Yep. As long as you've got that line sorted, then we can take another line. So those things are really important and you'll hear me yelling those out on the field today, mm. Brad, but um, players like her don't overcommit. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. As we see another one here for the Asian side, if hockey was decided by who took the most penalty corners, this Asian team be in the final tomorrow. Oh my goodness, it it just, that is true. Yep, they had a lot of them yesterday as well. They just can't quite find a way through here. You know, in PCs, you always need those players that really aren't too bothered if, if their face gets hit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I know Slide that sounds there. that sounds really bad, but. Those are the players that will get touches on anything. Yeah, well defended there by the Māori side. Now have another one. Yeah, you talk about players like that. I think of when I was playing at the sort of level, Connor Hedewini was one that yep. would just slide in under the Last goalkeepers. Minute. Yep. And he's so tiny, though. Yep. He could almost slide between one of your legs. <laughs> yeah. He'd slide in, didn't care about being hit. Um, you know, those sorts of players that just get in amongst it. Those are the players that get their name on the scoreboard because they do get the weirdest touches. Layoff. Oh, and she hits it. Oh, she got stuck just behind the goalie. It cleared. Oh, again. That was what we wanted to see a little earlier. They did that left <sighs> yes. layoff. The avenue was there again. Hit Cross it. The face it of the goal. Again, can only have been millimetres, really. I think it did. Uh, we'll have a look at the replay on this one. Layoff there. Oh, that's oh, safe behind the keeper. It was. It was on the line. It was Amy McConnell on the line. It wasn't Isabella Holt saving it in goal. It was, yeah. Brad. McConnell. If this last couple minutes has been anything that you could judge this game off. Uh, There's a possibility that this is going to I would love I would love it. Yeah. Unfortunately at, at three one, you know, they'd have to do it twice, but man it, it It's not undoable. I it, mean like that's a feat, but Yeah, we've got to get the first one. Here come the Asian side, penalty corner. Get the touch. Well saved by Holt. And now opportunity on the other end if they can release it. Oh, lovely. Smith on the ball. Oh, very nice play forward by the Māori ladies. Oh, just took a slight deflection on its way through and slowed them up. But danger sign's still here because Gabby Smith's on the ball. I, I, do you know what I liked about that passage of play is uh, I, I would say if you were to explain... New Zealand style of hockey, a lot of players run away from the ball. Yep. And if you just watch those Māori girls there, they all stayed connected with each other. So yep. the one, two, one, two, one, two, as they made their way up the field was so easy to execute. I really like to see that. Yeah, it was good there. It was uh, Garby and, and Rumatu and, and Ahu there working their way up this right side of the field. Didn't quite come off for them in the end, but you're right, the connection looked really strong. Here's Shnara Marshall. I got odds on a spin. Oh! <laughs> Just ran out of space, though. No, it will be a. I like that. Free hit first. And the overhead's not quite going to get out, but will fall there for the multi side. Here comes Grace Hilton Jones. Throw to Brown. Little miss trap there, unfortunate for the Māori team. We've got 40 seconds left on the clock here, I guess. Um, it'll just be trying to keep them out, and a, a consolation goal would be great, but, you know, holding them at bay after that, that little passage of play would be good. Yeah, and as uh, you mentioned, final minute or so, the uh, New Zealand junior Māori side will stay undefeated here at Heritage Hockey 2024. They'll head into... Tomorrow's final on the back of three wins, and it could be four goals if they can do it here. Oh, oh and it's there in. There it is. Murphy Phillips right under the camera gets the hug from her auntie in Shanae Phillips. Again, at, at that point, the positioning of the girls were, was really exceptional yep, there. Much no matter better. where the ball went, there was someone to pick it up. That's it. Much, much better the finish there. Uh, 
really good finish. Uh, and perhaps a little unfortunate for this, the Asian side uh, to concede one late there, considering how much possession, how many opportunities that had from the penalty corner. They will be disappointed, but all in all, all a really good performance by the Asians. Yeah, really good performance by the Asians. I'm, I'm super proud of these Māori girls to come come in and actually finish top of the table, guarantee themselves a spot in the final. Uh, it was really cool because we don't have our senior senior ladies here today, mm -hmm. and they're just upholding the manner of our of our people. It's real cool. Yeah, absolutely. And as I was saying, as we counted down those last 30 seconds, they'll go into tomorrow's gold medal match with three wins from three games, unbeaten with all the confidence in the world. Uh, who they're going to play, well, we'll find that out at 2 o'clock when you hit the field, Oriwa. Uh, but this one has been won convincingly in the end, 4-1 over the New Zealand Asian side. And don't take anything away from the Asian team. Uh, you know, they've improved game on game. They've continued to get better. They've shown that you know, it's right there for them. Um, and what I'm really excited about for this Asian team is what they come back looking like next year. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And how their style begins to develop. Yep. Um, what we can see and what we can um, pretty much just identify them as their style of hockey. Um, and I think going to, this, to these Māori ladies, uh, I think if you were to identify their style, for me it would be that they're strong. They're super strong on the ball. They will push you day in and day out. And then secondly, they are go forward. They yep. want to go forward. They want to attack. They want to show their flair. And they don't really want to use the back pass too often, yep. um, which is a, a definitely a style that I love. Yeah. Yeah, we'll uh, just have a quick little look at that last goal there. It was late in the uh, piece. Shinara Marshall there, first shot. They just <sighs> couldn't find it. The Asian defender was stuck there under Shuku. And Murphy Phillips, the one to jump onto it. Here, yeah, it's good positioning, like you said. Look at that yeah, from Shinara great, Marshall. Great inside, positioning. Yep, on the inside foot of the defender. First one to it, Murphy Phillips. She doesn't need a lot of space. And if we talk about defensively, I mean, getting onto your pads or behind your keeper once they're down is a vitally important skill to be able to do. Uh, so you can, when those opportunities happen, when they roll out from underneath the keeper, you, mm. there is another line of defense. Yeah, that's it. You talk about positioning being first there on the spot, ready for it. Uh, you know, really impressive. We're going to go down uh, turf side to Harley Cooper. He's catching up with a couple of the players down there. Harley. Hey, guys. Well, we're back again with the uh, winning captain for the Junior Maldives yet again, three days in a row. Congratulations. Well done, Penny. That was a, uh, a great game. How are you and the girls feeling after today's game? Oh, obviously, we're feeling a bit tired. Day three. We've still got a big game to go tomorrow and yeah we're just we're pumped for it actually we're ready so yeah so with the girls uh, any any injuries anything that we've got to be worried about because obviously we're getting a good role going on with the, the Māori woman so is there anything that we have to worry about no um, thanks to our manager Kate over here um, she's made sure we're all good and ready for tomorrow and for all of our games so yeah Okay, fair enough. And also, you got on the scoreboard uh, today as well. And uh, is that something we're going to be seeing more? You promoting, getting yourself in there, or is that just the captain's chance just to have a dig? Um, who knows? You know, it's a bit of luck, I think. Um, all credit to the girls, really. So yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Penny. You have a wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're just going to be seeing uh, Julia King. Julia King is a. Black stick, obviously. Well done. And uh, you're here with the Asian Fire Team for the first for the first time. What are your thoughts of the Asian team, and how are we going to start boosting the numbers going forward? Uh, yeah, it's just awesome to be here, being able to represent our heritage, our Asian heritage, and get a team together to play in this awesome tournament. Like we're really stoked to be here, and if we can just keep growing the numbers, getting the recognition for the Asian hockey community out there, then yeah, that's what we're aiming to do here, and we're just pleased to be here. It's a pleasure. And uh, going forward, so obviously you guys haven't been able to knock over the teams, but tomorrow is the last day. What are you going to hold in the? Uh, what have you got? What have you guys been holding on to? And you're going to unleash tomorrow? Uh, we got some secret dragon power out there, but um, maybe some wontons and stuff that we'll just throw at them. But now nah, we'll give it our best. We're just like, yeah, as I say, happy to be here and giving it everything out there. And hopefully, we've got one more game to sort of stamp our mark and hopefully get a win. I was going to say, you just mentioned the Wontons, which is the name of the men's team. Yeah. What, what is your guys' name again, if you might ask? Uh, we're the Dragons, so <laughs> each year we, um, we've, we've decided... That's not what go. I got told. Oh, OK. <laughs> Something else. <laughs> Stir fry, maybe. <laughs> but um, no, we're going to go with um, Dragons. We're, each year we're going to call out our um, Zodiac sign that we've got. So this year it's the Year of the Dragons. So, yeah, this oh. year we're the Dragons. 
Well, thank you very much, Julie. You have a wonderful time. Awesome. Bye. Thanks. Awesome. So uh, really good to hear from uh, two of the players down there on the field and, and especially Julia King. We mentioned her in the, the call, Oriwa, um, legend really um, as part of the Black Sticks and now spearheading some of the, uh, the action now for the Asian Dragons this year. They will be the Asian Dragons. Uh, I'm not sure what names Harley was, was planning on coming up with, but <laughs> we'll go with the Dragons. Um, again, look, you know, she, she exudes the professionalism and the experience level that she's played at. One of the best that we've had in the country for the last 10 years. And how cool is it for some of those young players that we saw in the Asian side to be along, able to play alongside Julia, learn from her, get some teachings and experience from her and grow for next year? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it is players like her that, that those younger players can look up to and realise that, you know... Th those dreams and those aspirations that you have, they're attainable. Yep. They're attainable for anyone who wants to work hard, be humble, and just get get cracking on with the mahi. Um, awesome to, to hear that they're, they're going with the zodiac sign. Yeah. Uh, obviously something that we could probably um, gain some more knowledge about, so maybe we'll be ask I'll asking, ask her a little bit later on about how that works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And... Uh you know, it takes players like her to spearhead something like this. You know, it doesn't really happen without someone really pushing it and driving it. And a, a figure like Julia, um, awesome. So, yeah, we'll find out a little bit more about the Zodiac uh, Sitch. If, if you're watching along, send us a text or a message or something. Uh, fill us in. But the Asian Dragons, as we see them in the picture there, they'll play again tomorrow. Of course, coming up next, it is the Asian men's side taking on the New Zealand junior Maori team. And there's implications around finals all through the men's games. Uh, so we'll, we'll explain that a little bit more in the call coming up. That one's coming to you live from about 12 noon, about half an hour's time. Um, Uriwa, thank you for your time again this morning. Good luck this afternoon. Uh, not that you need it, but I'm sure you'll go well. Uh, yeah. Thanks again for joining us. I've been Brad Pittman, joined by Uriwa Hippie. Kia ora, thank you. Kia pai tora.